Ella, a hardworking intern at a pharmacy, made a small but meaningful gesture by paying for a new mother's medicine. Her kindness, however, led to her being instantly fired by her strict boss. Just 60 minutes later, the pharmacy owner arrived. It changed her life forever. Hi everyone, welcome to Tales Unveiled. Today, I've got an extraordinary story with a surprising twist that will leave you amazed. Let's get started. Ella was a 22-year-old intern at Best Health Pharmacy. While studying at university, it had always been Ella's dream to intern there. The pharmacy was well known in town as one of the largest and had a high rate of hiring interns. Fortunately for Ella, when it was time for her internship, she secured a slot at Best Health Pharmacy. At the beginning of her internship, Ella did everything she could to impress her boss because she hoped to be hired at the end of her internship to start paying off her student loan. John, a man in his mid-30s, was Ella's boss. He was the manager of the pharmacy and was very strict. You're five minutes late, Ella. What did we say about lateness? John yelled one morning after Ella arrived at the pharmacy five minutes past eight. I'm so sorry, John. There was traffic on the road. I tried contacting you to let you know I'd be a bit late, but your number was not reachable, Ella explained. Traffic is no excuse. I live miles away from here and I make sure I arrive on time, John growled. I'm really sorry. I promise it won't happen again, Ella said. I don't need to remind you that there are hundreds of people who want your position. If you don't think this is for you, let me know, John said before walking away from Ella. For the rest of the day, Ella felt awful. She was already dealing with a lot at home, and John's yelling made things worse. Don't mind him, he's always grumpy. Cheer up, you can't let nasty John ruin your day, one of Ella's friends, Mary, said. Mary was also an intern at the pharmacy and was used to John making a fuss over small issues. Not just Mary, but everyone at the pharmacy, including the staff, disliked John because he was too strict. For example, if the interns and staff were talking freely and saw John, they would stop talking and pretend to work because they didn't want to get scolded or get into trouble. Do you think he's like this at home? His wife and kids must hate him, one intern whispered to another intern one day after John yelled at them. I doubt he's married. No woman would want to live with a monster like him, the other intern responded, and then they burst into laughter. Unfortunately for them, John was standing right behind them and overheard their conversation. Is that what you think? John asked in a harsh voice. Go inside and pack your things. You're dismissed, he said. When the two interns heard they were dismissed, they tried to beg John and apologize, but no matter how much they pleaded, John wouldn't listen. The interns were forced to leave and find another place for their internship by the end of the day. Even though Ella desperately needed to be hired after her internship, she began to doubt working with John as her boss. As the days passed, John's behavior became more toxic, and his toxicity caused Ella to become anxious whenever she was around him. Mom, I don't want to work there once my internship ends. I don't think I can handle John anymore, Ella said. But darling, you know how difficult it is to get a job. Working there is your best shot, and besides, we need the money. The sooner you start paying your student loan, the better, Ella's mother said. I don't think I can do this. My heart literally skips every time I see John. Just his presence alone makes it difficult to focus or even be myself, Ella said. I understand. I know how toxic some bosses can be, but for now, you just have to ignore him. You don't necessarily have to be in his good graces. Just focus on doing your job, Ella's mom said. Believe me, mom, John doesn't have a good graces book. He is the devil himself, Ella laughed. After that conversation with her mother, Ella tried her best to follow her mother's advice. Every day, she made sure to arrive at work a few minutes before 8 a.m. She would wake up by 6 a.m., fix breakfast, and start preparing for work. Then, before 7 a.m., she would leave the house to avoid traffic and arrive at the pharmacy on time. For weeks, Ella tried her best to avoid John. She only spoke to him when he asked her a question or instructed her to do something. She also agreed with Mary, the other intern, that they would not discuss John or the pharmacy while working to avoid the same fate as their friends. Since the pharmacy was to hire only one intern after their program, unfortunately, Mary had to leave. 
When Ella was officially hired and her friend Mary was forced to leave, she was very sad. Even though Ella knew only one of them would get to stay, she didn't expect to feel so sad. Shortly after Mary left, Ella felt lonely, although part of her was happy that she would finally be able to support her parents and begin paying off her student loan, another part of her felt suffocated. At the pharmacy, John treated the staff differently from the interns. He would yell at them over the slightest provocation and even use mean words or call them names if they didn't do what he instructed. The only things that kept Ella going in her toxic work environment were her mother's encouraging words and the friendly customers who visited the pharmacy daily. Additionally, since Ella had been going to that neighborhood for months, she became familiar with some of the locals and even made new friends. One of her new friends was Aria, a pregnant woman who frequented the pharmacy and lived in the neighborhood. Over the past months, Aria had visited the pharmacy to get medication for her pregnancy and continued to do so until she gave birth. One evening, Ella was at the pharmacy with some staff when Aria walked in with her baby. Hi, Ella. Can I please get a pack of supplements and some diapers? Aria asked with a smile. Sure, Aria. How are you today? And how is your baby doing? Ella asked while grabbing the items Aria requested. Oh, we're both doing great. Thank you, Aria responded. Here you go. That will be $22.50, Ella said. Oh my, I'm $10 short. Could you please keep that? I'll be right back. I left my wallet at home, Aria said. Oh no, Aria, you don't have to go all the way back home for just $10. Don't worry, I'll cover it for you, Ella said. Oh no, Ella, you don't have to, Aria said. Come on, Aria, it's just $10. I don't want you coming back twice for such a small amount, Ella said. Thank you so much, Ella, you're such an angel, Aria said. Without delay, Ella took $10 from her purse, added it to Aria's payment, and handed her the bag of medication and diapers. Unbeknownst to Ella, John was watching from a distance and was furious about what she had done. Ella, you're fired, John yelled at Ella immediately after Aria walked out of the pharmacy. I don't understand. Why? What did I do? Ella asked in shock. Who gave you the right to pay for customers? Do you think you're Father Christmas now? John growled. But she is my friend. She needed help and... I don't care if she's your friend or your mother. You're fired, John said. When John yelled at Ella a second time, she burst into tears and ran into the inner room. Make sure you pack your things while you're in there, John said at the top of his voice. Shortly after Ella entered the inner room, she changed her clothes and walked out with a small bag. Please, John, let me explain, Ella begged, but John ignored her. When Ella saw that John had made up his mind, she walked out of the pharmacy with tears rolling down her cheeks and took a taxi home. Don't worry, Ella. I'm sure God will provide you with another job. Ella's mother tried to console her. But, Mom, I didn't do anything wrong. There's no rule at the pharmacy that says I can't help someone in need, Ella said, her voice trembling. It's all right, baby. Stop crying, her mother said. What Ella did not know was that being fired was a blessing in disguise and that her life was about to change. Sixty minutes after Ella was fired, the owner of the pharmacy arrived to question John. It turned out that the pharmacy owner had been watching footage of the pharmacy when Ella helped the nursing mother and had also seen John fire her for it. Shortly after the owner arrived, he called Ella back to the pharmacy and apologized to her. But that wasn't all. The pharmacy owner fired John because he had received too many negative reports about him and appointed Ella as the new manager of the pharmacy. When this happened, Ella could not believe it. An hour earlier, she thought her world was crashing, and minutes later, she received news that changed her life. The best part was that the new position came with a very attractive salary, allowing Ella to settle her bills on time and still save some money at the end of the month. Her life literally transformed for the better, and she ensured that her new work environment was conducive for herself, the staff, and the interns. Through her simple act of kindness, Ella's life transformed in less than a day. As for John, after he was fired, his life changed dramatically. He was forced to take a menial job and learned some tough lessons on the way. Ella's story is a reminder that true success isn't always measured by material wealth or someone else's validation. It's often found in the small acts of kindness that make a difference in someone else's life. By choosing compassion over fear, 
Ella not only helped Arya, but also paved her own path to a more fulfilling future. Her journey teaches us that the most rewarding experiences are often the ones that challenge us to step outside of our comfort zones and embrace the power of human connection. Loved this story? Tap that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Let us know how this story made you feel with a single word in the comments. While you're at it, check out the video currently on your screen. See you next time.